Right, hi there, welcome to the video going through the solutions to our 2016 prelim for the Nat 5 one year course. Uh, just same again, it's going to be quite a long video. I'll do the marking for every question. Uh, if you don't want to watch it all, maybe just pick the questions that you think you need a bit more practice on and look at those parts of the video. Uh, okay, so question one, a biscuit factory produces three times 10 to the power of six tea cakes. Each one weighs 21.95 grams. What is the wheat? Weight of the tea cakes produced every week in kilograms. Just a wee uh, um, one there, just kilograms and grams. So we'll have to do a bit of uh, work at the end just to make sure we're doing it in the right format and scientific notation to three sig figs. Okay, so that's how many tea cakes they produce each week. So three times 10 to the power six. Every one of them weighs 21.95 grams. So we're going to multiply by 21.95. Okay, so in at the calculator. 3 times 10 to the power 6 multiplied by 31.95 gives you 6585 and then four zeros. Okay, now that's in grams, we want it in kilograms. So we need to divide this by a thousand because thousand grams in a kilogram. So it's going to be 65850. Okay, now we need to do last step scientific notation to three significant figures okay so three sig figs is going to be well one two three and that five is going to round up so it's going to be 6.59 and then it's times 10 to the power one two three four okay so there is your final answer okay now your marks there the first one is for setting up your sum the second one is getting the correct answer, either in grams or kilograms, and your third one is for filling all the uh, for filling all the obligations that they've said and writing it three sig figs, scientific notation in kilograms. Okay. Question two: a Garden room measures four point two by three point eight. You check the corners are right angled. The joiner measures diagonal room and found it's five point six. Are the corners of the room right angled? You must justify your answer. That's a calculation. Okay, so there's two different ways of doing this. Okay, you can either do converse of Pythagoras, and you can also do the cosine rule to find that angle there and check is it 90 degrees. Okay, I'm going to look at the converse of Pythagoras. So, converse of Pythagoras is checking, okay, does Pythagoras work? Does c squared equal a squared plus b squared? Okay, and that's what we want to check. Okay, so in there we are going to do c squared. Okay, we're going to use the potential hypotenuse. That's going to be the longest side, so 5.6 and square it. But we're also going to do 4.2 squared, add 3.8 squared. Okay, and check what those are. So 5.6 squared is 31.36. And 4.2 squared add 3.8 squared is a 32.08. Now, if it was right angled, they would be the same because Pythagoras tells us that if you, well, if you use the Pythagoras theorem, these two sides squared and added makes this one. That doesn't work. Therefore, it cannot be right angled. So c squared does not equal a squared plus b squared. Therefore. By the converse of Pythagoras, corners are not right angled. Okay, corners are not right angled. Okay, I'm a bit funny in that. Okay, now your other option there is to do the cosine rule to find the angle. So cos A is equal to B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. Finding this angle here, so 5.6 will go at the end, running it through and finding out what that answer is. Okay, and if it's 90, obviously it won't be because converse of Pythagoras says it's not either. Okay, so first one is for setting up your converse of Pythagoras, the second one's for calculating it, and the third one's for your statement at the end. Okay, the cosine rule is a bit more complicated, it's usually worth more, worth more marks, but it won't, you won't get all the marks here. You've got one mark for substituting in, one mark for finding the answer, and then one mark for your statement at the end. Okay, so question three. 
Molly bought some shares three years ago for 4,500, proved to be a good investment, and it is appreciated, okay, so there's a keyword, appreciated at a rate of 6.4% per annum. How much are Molly's shares worth now? Okay, so if it's gone up 6.4%, that's been added on. Okay, which gives us 106.4%. So that's what we're trying to find each year. So we start with 4,500. 106.4% as a decimal is 1.064. And that's happening repeatedly for three years. Okay, so 4,500 times 1.064 cubed gives you 5420.475648. Okay, now we want it to the nearest pound, so we're going to round it from there. So it's 5,420 pounds. Okay, marks. One mark for getting 1.064. One mark for setting up the whole equation, so uh, the whole sum. So 4,500 times 1.064 cubed. One mark for calculating it correctly, and then one mark at the end for your rounding. Okay, a cuboid displays relatively to a set of rectangular axes. The cuboid has a base measuring 6 units by 2 units and a height of 8 units. So it's point A has coordinates negative six zero eight. So it's six along the way, and it's two back, and it's eight up. Okay. That was not clear. That was no better. Okay. What are the coordinates of point B? Okay. So firstly, to start at the origin and go to point B, we don't move anything horizontally on the x-axis. So that is going to be zero. We're moving two, but it's moving two back along the y-axis because the y-axis is going this way. So it's going back along the y-axis, so that's going to be negative two. And then it's not going any up in there, so it's going to be zero. Okay, find the components of vector AB. Okay, so AB, we're going to find the components of a vector between two coordinates. We know that it's the second position vector subtracts the first, so B subtracts A. The position vector B is just a coordinate as a vector, so 0 minus 2, 0. Subtract A, which is minus 6, 0, 8. Okay, 0 subtract negative 6, so it's just 6. Minus 2 subtract 0 is minus 2, and 0 subtract 8 is negative 8. Okay, marks for that one. One mark for getting the coordinate B, one mark for knowing that AB is equal to B minus A, and then one mark for calculating that through. Okay, right, as a single fraction in its simplest form. If you're adding and subtracting fractions, we need the denominators to be the same. They're going to be the same here. For algebraic fractions, the nicest way to do it is just to multiply them together. So the denominator is going to be 7 plus X, X minus 4. Okay. That left-hand fraction has been multiplied by the x minus 4 in the denominator, so it has to be multiplied on the numerator as well. So it's 3 back at x minus 4. And then we are taking away that 7 plus x is multiplying by the second denominator, so it needs to multiply by the numerator as well. Okay, so there is your start of your uh, your answer for your fraction okay and there's your smile and a kiss for the ones who like to use that okay so multiplying out this fraction is three uh, these brackets sorry 3x minus 12 the second fraction has the second bracket has a minus 5 in front of it be careful there everything needs to get multiplied by negative 5 so negative 5 times 7 is negative 35 and negative 5 times x is negative 5x okay the denominator if it simplifies this fraction later on, it needs to be factorised, so I wouldn't bother multiplying that out. Okay, so 3x take away 5x on the numerator is negative 2x. Negative 12 subtract 35 is negative 47. And that does not factorise, so there's no further simplification going on. Okay, 
get marks, you get one mark for the denominator being correct, the second mark for your numerator being correct, and then your third mark is for simplifying correctly. Okay. So questions. Oh, it's question six gone. Here it is. Uh, don't know what you guys are talking about. That was there the whole time. Uh, no, let's see. That's my professionalism slipped. Okay, so the cone and sphere are the same volume. The radius of the sphere is seven. Height of the cone is twenty-four. Calculate the radius of the cone. Okay, work this in three sig figs throughout your calculations. Okay, so we know these have the same volume. Okay, and we need to find something on that cone in the second half of the question. Okay, so because we know the radius over here, we can use our volume of the sphere, which is on our formula sheet. So four thirds multiplied by pi multiplied by seven cubed. Okay, so wait your calculator gives you the answer. One four three six point seven five five and so on. It wants it to three sig figs throughout the calculation. So that's going to be one four four zero centimeters cubed. Okay, now we know that the cone has the same volume, so we can use the volume we've just calculated in the volume of a cone formula, which is on your formula sheet, to calculate that radius. Okay, so the volume we know is 1440. Third and pi are just numbers, we don't know the radius, uh, but we know the height is 24. Okay, now you're calculating that radius. Okay, so radius squared. You need to cancel out all the rest of these times. These big row of times these cancels out by dividing. So divide both sides by a third times pi times twenty four. Okay, excuse me a wee second, just gonna get a tad a bit longer. Okay, now That just gives you r squared, so r is going to be the square root of all of that. So the square root of 1444 over 1 third times pi times 24. Okay, I think your calculator. Okay, and it gives you the answer. It gives you the answer 7.56939 and so on, which three sig figs is 7.57 centimeters. Okay, doc. Let's look at the marking. Okay, five marks one for subbing correctly into the volume of the sphere and one for calculating the volume of the sphere. One for substituting correctly into your volume of a cone formula, one for rearranging to r squared, and then one for square root into your final answer. Okay, doc. So question seven. Standard deviation and mean question. Okay, so firstly, let's calculate our mean. So x bar is going to be all of them added together divided by the number or divided by n. Over six. Okay, that's four eight seven. Okay, two different ways to find the standard deviation. Okay, firstly, first way would be to set up your table. So the x's are four eight five, four eight seven, four eight three. Okay, I'm just going to pause it and go through this table a second. I'll talk through it afterwards rather than you sitting and make it, watching me draw out a table. Okay, so there's your table, your x's, 
your x subtract the x bars and then your x subtract the x bar squares and your total of your x minus x bar squares at the bottom there. So the standard deviation from your formula sheet is the square root of the total of your x minus x bars squared over n minus 1. So that means it's the total, which is 58 over 5, square rooted. Put your calculator, and it's 3.4058. Eight and so on, which is 3.4. Okay, now the other way of doing your standard deviation is there at the bottom. Okay, so finding your x's, finding your total x squared, and then finding your totals, and then using the other for uh, substituting them. Either way, you're going to get exactly the same answer. Okay, now. Uh, on a second production line, a sample of six packet gives it a mean of 480 and a standard deviation of 4.8. Okay, so our mean is 487 on the first production line and the standard deviation is 3.4. Okay, so in the first one, the mean is 487 and the standard deviation is 3.4. Okay, the second one, 480, 4.8. Two comments comparing the two production lines. I'm just going to do this orally. Okay, so the first one has a higher mean. Therefore, on average, it produces more or heavier packets. Okay, so that's your first line has to compare the means. The first production line has a higher mean. Therefore, on average, they have heavier packets. Okay, that's your first mark. The second one has a higher standard deviation. And remember, standard deviation measures spread. So it has a higher standard deviation. Therefore, the results are more varied. Okay, and that is your two marks there. Okay, just... Okay, your mark for part A are one mark for the mean one mark for getting the total, one mark for subbing in, and one mark for calculating. Okay, and your alternative method, one mark still for the mean, second mark for your two totals, third mark for subbing, and fourth mark for calculating. Okay, so on to question eight. This chair is valued at 5376, which is 12% more than it cost a year ago. How much did it cost a year ago? Okay, trick here that we've got to notice is we are not being given the original 100%. We are being given the answer after this change has happened. Okay, so what we have here is the answer. We need to work backwards to our 100%. So that 5376 is 112%. And what we want to do is work our way down to 1% to come back up to 100%. So we're going to divide by 112 and then times by 100. Okay, now if it's a non-calculator paper, you'd have to maybe a bit, do things a bit differently and pick a nicer number, like if it was coming from 120% going down to 10%, it's probably a bit easier than going down to 1%. But because this is a calculator paper, we're just going to go down to 1% all the time. Okay, so 1% is 48, which means 100% is a 4,800. Okay, you're marking for that. You'll get one mark for making your first statement that 112% is 5,376. Your second mark for calculating 1% and your third mark for calculating the answer. Okay, question nine. Sector circle shown opposite. The exact area of the sector is 6 pi square centimetres. Okay, so just a number, just in a slightly unusual form. Calculate the size to the nearest degree of the angle A O B. Okay, so we're working with sector area. So sector area is theta over 360 times pi r squared. It's a fraction of the area. Okay, we know the sector area is 6 pi. 
We don't know the angle, but we're going to call it x because that's what they called it. And we know the radius of the overall circle is going to be 8. Okay, now we need to rearrange this so we can calculate x. First, I'm going to get rid of this big row of timesies. That cancel out with divides on both sides. Then I'm going to cancel out that divide by 360 by multiplying by 360. So x is going to be 6 pi over pi times 8 squared multiplied by 360. Okay, and we have to calculate the size to the nearest degree. Okay, so we've got our calculators. 6 pi over pi times 8 squared multiplied by 360 is 33. 0.75. So to the nearest degree, I'm just going to put it over here, sorry, is 34 degrees. Okay, the first one is, first mark is for using the correct surface area, a uh, sector area formula, second subbing in. The third one's your rearranging, and your fourth one's your calculation with the correct rounding. Okay, doc. Okay, two searchlights A and B are positioned on the ground 40 metres apart. They both focus on an object C when the angle of elevation from A is 49 and B is 38. Calculate the height of the object above the ground. So, seven mark question, big, big question here. Okay. First thing to notice is you don't have enough information in either right angle, triangle there. Okay, because that 40 meters goes beyond both, you only have a, uh, an angle in both. So the first thing you're going to have to do is look at it without that height involved. Okay, so if you've got 49 there, 38 there, in the big triangle, you can calculate you can calculate that third angle is 93 degrees. And then what that lets you do is along with that 93 and 40, you've got one of your loops or one of your, your corresponding pairs. And then you can find either side from there. So if we call that X, that gives you another pair. And you can use the sign rule with that. Okay, so with that larger triangle there, X over sine 49, is equal to 40 over sine 93. When you cross multiply, x sine 93 is equal to 40 sine 49. And then divide both sides by sine 93. x is going to be 40 sine 49 divided by sine 93. Okay, type that in your calculator. That gives you 30.2 meters on that right hand side. Okay, now what you can do is you can work in that right angle triangle there. Okay, in that right angle triangle, we have 38, 30.2, and you're trying to find that height. Okay, two ways you can do this. Again, you could do the sign rule. Okay, and a lot of you might just be more comfortable doing that, a bit fresher in the memory. But you could also use soccer tour. Okay, with soccer tour, because it's a right angle triangle, you can use soccer tour. In that triangle, compared to this angle, we have the hypotenuse on the opposite, which means we can just use our sine 38 is opposite over hypotenuse. So h over 30.2 times both sides by 30.2, h is 30.2 sine of 38. So 30.2 sine of 38. Is eighteen point five nine two nine so on. I'm just gonna have a double check. Doesn't ask for any 
doesn't ask for any uh, rounding, so let's just do it to three significant figures, let's do 18.6 metres. Okay, let's have a look at the marking. Bard. Okay, so marks. Firstly, one for identifying the 93 degrees. The second is for knowing to use the sign rule. Okay, so just evidence of that. Third one's substituting correctly into the sign rule. And the fourth one, rearranging to get your answer 50.2. Okay, the fifth mark is for it using that right angle triangle. Okay, so for the strategy there in a three sketch will be enough or the implication from the working. Third ones are using Sokotoa correctly. Sorry, the sixth ones are using Sokotoa correctly, and the seventh one's going for your angle. Okay, if you use the sign rule again, the sixth one there would be for substituting into the sign rule, and then the seventh one would still be for your answer. Okay, last question. Okay, the diagram below, which is not drawn to scale, represents the position of three checkpoints on our car rally. Checkpoint B is on a bearing of 120 from checkpoint A and is 30 kilometres away. The bearing of checkpoint C from A is 162 and it's 56 kilometres away. Lewis thinks that the total journey from A to B to C to A to A to B to C to A, just one circuit, is 125. Is he correct? Okay, so firstly, in here, if we want to know the whole circuit, we need to find this. So that's the one we're looking for. Okay, we've got all the information on the diagram apart from that 162. Okay, now, this is where you just need to be careful with the language. The bearing of checkpoint C from A. So it's from A. So we know the angle is going to be up at A. Okay, and it's a bearing of checkpoint C. So it has to be from north in the direction of C. So that angle there, from north all the way around to that line, that's your 162. Okay, that 120 goes from north around to the line to B. Okay, so because we know from north to that line 162 and from north to that line 120, we know this angle in here has to be the difference, which is 42. Okay, now there's nothing else you can do there with bearings. Okay, nothing meaningful anyway. So what I would always do then is come out of that situation now and just do a quick sketch. Obviously, yours is going to be much neater than that. In fact, I'm going to do that again because I'm so embarrassed by it. Okay, I'm going to do it just with lines to make it a bit neater. So, one, two, three. Okay, we now know that in this we've got 42 degrees there. We've got 30, 56. And we're trying to find this x. Now we need to be thinking with that triangle. Well, I can't use a sine rule because I've only got one pair. I've only got one loop. No other angles I can use. But the cosine rule, I've got two sides and the angle in between. So I can use my cosine rule. Okay, which is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc plus a, okay, which is in this case 30 squared plus 56 squared minus 2 times 30 times 56 cos of the angle, which is 42. Okay, now in the calculator it goes. Which gives you 6532.966 and so on. Don't fall into the trap, the common mistake A is going to be the root of that answer, which is 80.826 and so on. Okay, we're doing it to the nearest kilometre, so let's call A, and I'm just over here, 81 kilometres. Okay, and if you've got a different answer for me, don't worry, I've just realised that my fat fingers hit plus in them, I go and set a minus. Okay, I almost made it the whole way through without making a mistake, to, well, to the best of my knowledge anyway. Okay, so A squared is 1539.03, so on. 
uh, and if you root that, it gives you 39.23 so on, which to the nearest kilometer is 39 kilometers. Okay, so that's you found. Okay, that's you found x. Okay, so that's x squared, and this is x. Okay, now Lewis thinks that the total journey from A to B to C to A, so a full circuit is 1, 2, 5. Okay, so let's double check it. It'll be 30 plus the 39 plus 56, which is 1, 2, 5. Therefore, Lewis is correct. Okay, finally, let's just check the marking and then we'll be done. Okay, so here, first mark's for getting your angle 42. Second mark is for knowing to use your cosine rule. Third mark's for substituting incorrectly. Fourth mark's for the 39. And the fifth mark is for adding them together with a statement. Okay. Thank you very much. If there's anything else we can help you with, just don't hesitate to give us a shout. Thank you.